In this video, we're going to be covering variables, naming, and basic assignments. In a previous section, we saw that you could use the Python interpreter to evaluate expressions and immediately retrieve the results just like you would a calculator. In this section, we're going to discuss how you can save those results for future use using variables. To create a variable, we must first create a name for that variable. So for example, let's create a variable to store the width of some object. So I'll name the variable width. Now this declares the name for our variable, but doesn't define it yet. In order to do that, we actually have to assign it a value using the assignment operator or the equals character. And then of course, following that, we need a value. So for instance, I'll put 20 here. After the interpreter evaluates this line, we can use the variable name width and computations instead of hard coding the value 20 everywhere. This has the obvious benefit of making our code much easier to read and understand. And also, if we need a width different from 20, we only need to change it once, namely where we define this variable, rather than every place it's used. Now, after a variable has been initialized or assigned, we can access its value via the variable name itself. So to see the value of width, we simply type the name width and then run the code block. And we see in the output that we get our value 20 returned to us. Now to clarify what's happening here, when the interpreter sees an assignment like width equals 20, it doesn't actually store the value 20 inside width. Instead, it actually binds the result or the object on the right-hand side of the equals to the name on the left-hand side. You can think of this as the variable name is referring to or pointing to the object that represents the value on the right-hand side of the equals. Now, there's nothing special about our variable name width. We could have chosen any name we like as long as it adheres to a couple of rules. The first of which is variable names should only contain alphanumeric characters and the underscore. The second rule is the variable name cannot begin with a number. And lastly, the variable name cannot match any reserved keyword. So to demonstrate these rules, we're going to try to create some variable names that violate them. So first, let's use a non-alphanumeric character. So here I'll type H and then ampersand say equals maybe 45. And when we run this, we'll see that we get an error stating this is invalid syntax. Similarly, if we tried to begin our variable name with a number, we would get a different error stating invalid decimal literal, meaning that the interpreter itself wasn't expecting to find a number in this position and didn't know what to do with it. And finally, if we attempt to use a reserved keyword, you'll see that we get yet another syntax error stating that it's not expecting an equal sign following, in this case, a break statement. And you'll see the break statement appears here in the reserved keyword list. So the interpreter will let you know when you violate one of these rules when you attempt to create a new variable name. One thing that I will point out though is that Python is case sensitive, meaning that names that differ only by case are actually considered to be different names or different variables. So we could change the case of any letter in a reserved keyword and then use that as a valid variable name. For instance, we could capitalize the B and break. But this type of use is heavily frowned upon and it can actually make your code more difficult to read, understand, and follow. Now, as a reminder, Python does have an official style guide, PEP8, and the link is given here, which points to the subsection on recommended ways to name functions and variables and so forth. So it is definitely worth a read, and I would recommend bookmarking it for future reference. In the previous examples, we've been assigning or binding constant values to our variables, but the right-hand side can actually be any expression. So for instance, we can say height is equal to five times nine, or we can even use previously defined variables in place of constants, like area is equal to the width times height, since we defined width in our previous example, and we've just defined height here. Also, we can pass these variables as arguments to functions like the print function. So I can write print and then pass a string, the area is, comma, and then our variable area. And if we run this block, we see that we get the output, the area is 900, where the width was 20 multiplied by the height, which was 45, giving us the value 900. Now, if we try to use a variable that has not yet been defined, so for example, let's say I'm trying to use depth in an expression to compute the volume of some object, We've defined width and height as we've seen already, but we have not defined depth. So when I run this block, you see that we get a name error specifying that the variable name depth has not yet been defined. So of course, if we define it and try again, see now that we get the result of 1800. 
In addition to the basic assignment operator, Python also supports a set of compound assignment operators, which provide a set of shortcuts for in-place operations. The table here gives you a subset of those operators. So for example, let's say we had the variable x and it contained the value nine. If we wanted to update it by adding five to it, we could write x equals x plus five, and then output an x. And this would give us the value 14. But if we look at the table here, there's an equivalent operation using a compound operator where we can say x plus equals five in place of our x equals x plus five. So I'll reset x to have the value nine again. And now in place of x equals x plus five, I'll use a compound operator, and then we'll output x. You'll see that we get the same result. Now this does have a couple of benefits. The first of which is these operators can be more memory efficient since they may perform in-place operations. And of course, use of these operators can improve the readability of your code. 